the convenience. So now that we got our coffee, what are we talking about today? Talking about license plates. Why? Because there's a lot going on here. It looks simple. There's very little marks other than the numbers and the characters. Like there's no there's no designs or anything. There are some designs, but it's not as easy as it seems. And also that bolt is kind of interesting as well and why it's different from the other bolt. It's keyed specifically for the rear of a car. And we're gonna explain all that right now. <laughs> When it comes to license plates in Japan, they're split in two primary categories. Regular cars over 660cc, or keiji dosha, or K cars, or small cars that are 660cc or below. Within those two categories, there are several subcategories. The first one we're going to talk about is the most standard plate you're going to see, and this is the white plate with green writing. So we're just gonna start with the first thing on the top left corner, and that is the characters. The characters are your prefecture, but they're not always your prefecture. They could be a ward, a district, a city, or even an area. 95% of the time it is written in kanji, or the Chinese characters. Those are the ones that have a lot of strokes. Surprisingly enough, Unofficially, these plates hold a lot of status. Depending on what your plate says, it can either be seen as super cool or not cool. For example, the plates that say Mount Fuji are not seen as very cool, but arguably the coolest plate out there is this one, the Shinagawa plate. These are the ones that are in all the TV commercials, all the movies, these are the ones that you want. However, you can only run a plate that you actually have the car registered to. So let's move over to the bottom left corner, and that is the character. This character on consumer cars always be one of the hiragana alphabet. There are some excluded characters, but it's basically for variation purposes, so there's no overlap. Now there are two exceptions. This character, wa, means that it's a rental car. The other exception is in Okinawa Prefecture. Okinawa has a very limited transit system, meaning that there's a lot of cars there. There's also a huge amount of tourists, which means there's a lot of rental cars. More than they actually had for the WA character. Okinawa is the only prefecture out of all 47 prefectures in Japan that has an additional rental car character. And this is LE, or RE. Now for the big numbers. This is like any country's numbers. This is just your own numbers, the ones that differentiate your plate from another plate. There are some things you can do. If you do customize your plate, which will revolve around the top numbers, we'll touch on in a second, you can choose from different characters. You can choose numbers, blanks, dashes, or dots, and a combination of either of those. Now for the numbers on the top right corner. There are three characters, 100, all the way to all zeros. All zeros are the rarest. It means construction equipment. Very rarely you'll actually see them on the road because they're not always road legal. 100 series is trucks with displacement larger than 2000 cc. However, sometimes you'll see some overflow of import vehicles that have a 100 plate but don't always comply with the exact amount of cubic cc that the engine has. 200 series is a bus. 100% of the time if you see a 200 plate, it's a bus. 300 is the most common. You will see 300 on passenger cars with a displacement larger than 2000 cc or exceeding length and width regulations for compact cars. Most cars like we all know will all have 300 plates. K cars will never come in a 300 plate. 400 plates are trucks, vans, or station wagons with displacement from 660 cc to 2000 cc shorter than 4.7 meters. Which means, yes, K cars can have 400 plates, like my K truck here. 
or regular cars can have 400 plates, like this Pro Box. 500 plates are cheaper to insure, pay tax on, and inspect than 300 plates. 500 plates are passenger cars from 660cc to 2000cc shorter than 4.7 meters, which means step wagons, some Toyota Noah vans, and even some compact cars like the Yaris can have a 500 plate. And of course, 80% of all K cars will have a 500 plate just because they're inherently smaller than other vehicles on the road. On paper, a 600 series is a three-wheeled truck with a displacement less than 360cc. Likely, you will never see a 600 plate. 700 plates are passenger cars with displacement 660cc to 2000 overflow series. That means if too many people have the same plate of a 300 series or a 500 series, they'll overflow you to a 700 series. Again, incredibly rare. 800 series is a tricky one as well. It's special vehicles requiring yearly inspection. I have seen K cars with 800 plates, trucks with 800 plates that have gas tanks on the back, even some police cars have 800 plates. 900 plates are city equipment, big cranes that need to drive on the road for short distances. You can never own a 900 plate. Now for the amount of digits. The most common you'll see today are three digits and that's because there's more people and more cars, more registrations, therefore you need more variants. In fact, sometimes there's so many people going after one specific plate that there will be two digits and a letter. Anything two digits means that you've had your car for a very long time because you can't get two digit cars anymore and they can't take away your two digit plates. One digit plates are ridiculously rare and I've never actually seen one on a car that's running. Although if you have a one digit plate on your vehicle, it stays with the vehicle and likely you can insure it. Here's another thing. If the last two digits of your plate are zero zero, that means you just got your plate. You can see here on my legacy, I did not customize my plate, but on my BRZ, I did customize my plate. So the last two digits will be anything except zero zero. This holds true for K cars as well. Moving on to the color variants. The standard plate is a white plate with green letters, meaning you have a full size car and it's a private vehicle. However, if you had your full size vehicle registered as a commercial vehicle for your business, the plate itself would be green and the letters and numbers would be white. 100% of the time, K cars used to be only yellow. It was the primary way of differentiating whether your car was a K car or not. So recently, you are able to get white plates. There are exceptions, however. One is when you're at the insurance agency, you register your plate with the mark of a football club. The other one being the Olympics. If you get Olympic plates, doesn't matter if you're a full-size vehicle or a K car, you can have a white plate and they're the exact same size. If you were to have a commercial K car, you have undoubtedly the coolest looking plate, which is a black plate and yellow letters. Because Japan doesn't touch any other country like say Canada and the US do, you'll never see any other plates except Japanese plates. There are a few exceptions that surprisingly enough you could see day to day. And these are foreign diplomat plates. They have a mark on the left that says outside, basically. And of course, the US Army. There is one exception to the left character being anything except a Japanese character. And this will be if it has a Y on it. This will be for the US forces. Last thing we're gonna touch on is what I told you at the start of this video and that is this bolt here. This bolt is not meant to come off until you deregister the car, get an ex export certificate or you register a new plate. You actually, this is a one-time deal, it's a one-shot deal. You cannot take this off by any normal means, you actually have to wreck it. They, they cut it open and they rip it off to get the 
uh, cap off. And this actually corresponds with your plate's prefecture as to cut down on theft and make sure you don't swap out any of the plates that you're not supposed to swap out. Thanks for watching this episode of Toge Trial. Hope it's been informative and a little bit fun at the same time. If you guys have any other questions, let us know if you guys need any other tips and tricks on anything to do with cars in Japan or Canada or to a lesser extent America. Hit us up down below. Till the next one.